Welcome to Robot Geek 101, installing the Arduino software on your Mac. The Arduino software is going to allow us to program different firmware and upload that firmware up to our Geekduino board. We'll then be able to change the behavior of the Geekduino board and anything that's attached to it. The Arduino software is cross-platform and works on Mac OS X with no problem. The drivers, on the other hand, can be a little bit tricky depending on what version of Mac OS you're running. If you go up to the Apple menu and click About This Mac, you'll see your version of Mac OS X. For this video, I'm using Yosemite 10.10. .10. If you're using 10.11 El Capitan or newer, you shouldn't have any problems with your drivers. 10.10, 10.9, and 10.8 have their own Apple supplied drivers that don't work properly with Arduino, so we're going to have to make some changes later in the video. What we're going to do in this video though is we're going to install the IDE first, we're going to install our libraries and tools, make sure that all of that is set and working, and then we'll try to upload to our board. If we have problems, we will then fix the drivers. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to arduino.cc. This is the official Arduino site where you're going to find the Arduino IDE. There are some other Arduino based sites out there that may host different versions of Arduino IDE, but we recommend that you always go to arduino.cc for the latest and greatest. So you're going to go over here and click on this Downloads tab. You'll see Arduino 1.67, the latest version of Arduino. We've tested everything with 1.67. Click on Mac OS 10.7 line or newer. Arduino is free software. It is open source and available to anyone. If you do feel like you'd like to contribute, feel free to contribute here. Otherwise, click Just Download. Once everything's downloaded, we'll open up our Downloads folder. Depending on how you have your Mac and Safari set up, it may automatically extract the application for you, so you'll just see this Arduino application right away. If you don't have your Mac set to automatically extract zip files, you're going to see this Arduino 1.67 Mac OS X zip file. Just double click it and let the archive utility expand out the Arduino application. Either way, when you're done, we're going to take this Arduino application, drag it to our Applications folder. In the Applications folder, we'll double-click Arduino to open it. You're going to see this verifying. You're also going to get this message. Go ahead and just say Open. If for any reason you don't see that Open prompt or you're having problems, Try right-clicking in Arduino and picking Open from the contextual menu. This will change the way that Gatekeeper handles the application and allow you to open it. Once the Arduino application opens, you should see this window, Arduino, up in your main menu. And the first thing we're going to do is quit Arduino. The reason we opened Arduino was to generate an Arduino sketchbook folder. So if you look in Documents, you should see the Arduino folder. If you don't have this documents link, you can always go to your root drive. On mine, I have, I'm here in Mac. Then go to Users, Your Username, and you'll see that Documents folder. You should have this Arduino folder with a Libraries folder in there, and the Libraries folder is just going to have a readme.txt file in it. Now, on our Getting Started Guide, we're going to have a link directly to the Tools and Libraries. You'll see this Robot Geek Tools and Libraries link will download a zip file. You can also go to our GitHub page, Robot Geek, Robot Geek Libraries and Tools, and there'll be a zip download there. Again here, you'll either see this folder, Robot Geek Libraries and Tools Master, or you'll see a zip file for the Robot Geek Libraries and Tools, depending on your settings. In this Robot Geek Libraries and Tools Master, you'll see a Libraries folder and a Robot Geek Sketches folder. You want to copy both of these folders into the Arduino folder. You're going to be asked if you want to replace that Libraries folder. You're going to go ahead and say yes. So now you should be able to, in your Arduino folder, see Libraries. You'll see all of these libraries like Nunchuck, Link, Commander. Inside each has a CPP and a .h file. Over in Robot Geek Sketches, you'll see RG101, Tests, and Tools. 
So if you're not new to Arduino and you already have some libraries installed, you're just going to want to grab this Robot Geek Sketches, make sure it's in your Arduino folder, then open Libraries, and copy each individual library into your Libraries folder. Now that all of our files are installed, we're going to go back to Applications and open up the Arduino IDE. First thing we're going to do is check to make sure all the libraries were installed correctly. So we're going to go to File, Sketchbook, Robot Geek Sketches, Tests, Library Test. If you don't see this Robot Geek Sketches and Library Test file, that means that your files were not placed in the correct place. So take a look back in the video and on the file tree on our Getting Started Guide and make sure that your files are in the correct place. I'm going to go and open up Library Test. This is going to include a bunch of the different libraries, just to make sure that they're there. So we're going to go ahead and click Verify. Verify is just going to compile all the code together and make sure that it makes sense from the computer standpoint. So if I didn't have my libraries copied in the right places, this code wouldn't work. But because I do, I should get this done compiling message. If I get an error here, again, I need to go check my files and make sure they're in the correct place. Now I'm going to go to File, Example, Basics, Blink. This Blink code is going to turn the LED on the Geekduino on and off. So now it's time to upload code to my Geekduino. I've got a USB micro cable plugged into my computer that I'm going to plug into the Geekduino board. You'll always see a green power LED light here. You might see some red or green LEDs over here in the middle. Don't worry about those right now. Back in Arduino, we're going to go to Tools. Under Board, you want to pick Arduino, Duemila, Nove, or Dies Miela. That's the board the Geekduino is based on. You'll also see this processor. You want to make sure at Mega328. And then you're going to see this port. Now, here you're going to have Bluetooth serial ports that you're not going to use. And then you, you should see something like this. It says CU.USB serial followed by a number. If you don't see an entry like this, then that means that your system doesn't have any FTDI drivers, so skip ahead and get your FTDI drivers installed. If you're on 10.11, you should be able to pick this with no problem. 10.10 and earlier, you might have a couple of issues. If you want to make sure that this is the serial port for your Geekduino, just unplug it, go back to Tools, and you'll see the port's gone away. Each Geekduino you pick will have a unique name, so this AL01EW7L is going to change depending on your physical board. With everything selected, I see my board here, my processor, and my port. Now I can go over to this upload arrow, go ahead and click on it. This process will compile and upload the sketch to the Geekduino. If everything's worked properly, we will see this done uploading message as well as the green LED blinking on and off every second. Now again, because we can have some FTDI driver weirdness on certain systems, we're going to upload the sketch one more time. This is going to verify for us that our drivers are working properly. If we see an error like this, this means that the Arduino system was unable to synchronize with the Geekduino and is trying to reprogram it. It's going to keep trying this for about 10 times until it finally gives up. And you see this problem uploading to board, and I was expecting this since I was on macOS 10.10. .10. The first thing we're going to need to do is go to ftdichip.com. This is where we get the drivers for the FTDI chip on the Geekduino. We're going to go over to drivers. VCP drivers. I'm going to go to Installation Guides. I'm going to scroll down to Mac OS X, and I'm going to go ahead and download the linked file so that it saves it to our Downloads folder. I'm going to go back one, back to this VCP drivers. I'm going to scroll down. Based on what system I have, I'm going to pick my correct driver. So since I'm on 10.10, .10, I'm going to pick 2.3. If you are earlier, you will need to grab one of these earlier drivers. Once everything's downloaded, I'm going to go check out my downloads folder. 
I'm going to open up this PDF in preview. And I'm going to go ahead and mount this FTDI USB serial disk image. Installing the drivers is really straightforward. Just double click on your .pkg file. Continue, 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 agree. Install with the default location. You will need to give it your password for your Mac OS X account. If everything installs correctly, you'll get this installation was successful message and you can close that. Now this has installed the drivers, but we still need to disable Apple's drivers. That's where this guide comes in. If we scroll down, we'll see section seven, disabling the Apple provided VCP on 10.9 and later. So this will just work for 10.9 and later. For 10.8, just installing the drivers should be enough. We're gonna go down to page 22. Now we're gonna to need to open up a terminal session. So go to your finder, Applications, find your Utilities folder. There should be a program called Terminal. Alternatively, you can go to your Finder Spotlight and just search Terminal, and it'll come right up. Terminal allows us to run command line operations, so this is sort of an easier way to move all of this. Basically, what we're doing is we're going to CD or change directory to where the extension for FTDI is. We're then going to move the driver, which is this Apple USB FTDI.kext, and we're going to move it, which just essentially renames it to this .disabled file. Then we're going to touch extensions, and this just updates the extensions folder so when we restart, everything knows to pull in new drivers. So I'm going to copy this first line, paste it in my terminal, hit enter. I should see this prompt again. Now I'm going to grab this second line. I'm going to paste this in and enter. It's going to ask me for my password. So once I've entered my password correctly, I will get my prompt again. Then I can run this last code. It won't need the password since I already just put it in. Now all I need to do is restart my system. If everything has gone correctly, once you've restarted your system, you'll be able to check your board port, make sure they're all correct. Go ahead and upload. As we expected, everything uploaded. Let's try a second time. done uploading again. If we wanted to change something to make sure that the code is actually getting there, we can change this to 500 instead of 1000. What that's going to do is blink the LED twice as fast. Now you'll see the LED blinking even faster. So now you've got everything you need to get started with Robot Geek 101. In our next video, we'll be going over serial communication and how you can program and interact with the Geekduino.